Dear Laura, I'm writing to you in great anguish because I am tired, tired of running my business. After 20 years of perfecting my technique, I'm no longer able to give energy to the daily profession of treating my patients or taking care of my employees. I've not saved enough to retire, and I'm unable to sell my practice for any significant value. I need direction and inspiration. I'm looking to a coach who I know will lead me to what we need to know so that we may get back to the task of doing what we love, which is taking care of our patients. This letter is written by a dentist who, after 20 years of taking care of the clinical skills, realizes that there's more to the profession of dentistry than just developing their technique. I was grateful to get it. And after 28 years of consulting and sharing wisdom, wisdom learned not only from other professionals, but from reading, guidance, books, that there are three things, three Ps and alliteration, if you will, that we can remember that gives us a point to jump off. What do we do when someone writes to us, asking us to help solve their problems? They have hope. So three Ps. One, purpose. We learn from authors like Chuck Blakeman how important purpose is. Two, pride. Loving what you do, guiding them back to the things that they love to do. And three, passion. We've been hearing during this meeting how important passion is. So, let's start with purpose. When identifying with the client what their purpose is, it can be large and it can be small. I'm very, um, very much a, a, a proud advocate of asking this question. What's the point? Because I think that when they begin to examine exactly why they're doing what they're doing, that they then can always revisit that. And that when they do, every now and then, they have to be reminded of it. In addition, purpose can also be defined, it can be known as a mission statement or a vision statement, which actually goes even larger. It's, it's even longer stretching. It's their dream. It's their vision. What did they get into dentistry? What were they inspired to do from the very beginning? And even when you can work with the team, we all know that it's often difficult for people to be challenged to do something differently. Change is challenging. And so even when working with employees, if we can just bring them back to what are you trying to achieve? What's your objective? I think then purpose will help you move them from this hopeless place to their hopeful place. Second, we want to inspire pride in what they do. So many of us find ourselves just really knocking away at all the things that we don't do well. What if we were to raise them up and give them tasks that they actually are proud of? I had the, the benefit, or I don't know, we'll say that yet, but uh, I just moved. Some of you know that I just moved. It took 12 days. I moved across the street. It takes a village to do that. But I am uh, so blessed to tell you that it was because of the village, my friends. I had one who was proud to have come from out of retirement to Tampa, from out of town, stay overnight for two nights, and inspired, got up in the morning and said, we're moving your office tomorrow. I had another friend who simply painted a door jam. Didn't I do a great job? And I had another friend, a hairstylist, who, when looking at the tasks I had put on the refrigerator the day that actual movers came and there were still just tidbits to do, she picked the task of cleaning all the shelves. And all she did was just go through the house came away from that and said, wasn't that great? So when you can have people inspired by how proud they are of the work that they're doing, you'll find that they'll again move from where they were hopeless to hopeful. Three, passion. Boy, you know, you see a lot of passion in this room. I just enjoyed so much, uh, you know, getting to know Uche last night and you know, Roy and his stories, how passionate they are. Perhaps you have seen me be passionate about the oral systemic health connection, and how important it is for us to educate our patients about the link of periodontal disease to particularly heart disease. 
But I want to bring a, a story to close, and it goes to something that Dana Johnson was part of. How many of you followed Dana this year when she was at Super Bowl Meadowlands, February 2nd, 2014, the 12th fan? The Seattle Seahawks against the Denver Broncos. I have no vested interest in either team other than I was watching my friend Dana Johnson. Facebook post, the dream of a lifetime, going to the Super Bowl. Now, interestingly, I was home. It was the very first time I'd watched the Super Bowl at home alone. And I watched both Peyton Manning and Russell Wilson come out of the tunnel. First time I'd actually noticed something to this degree. Now, all the media led us to believe Peyton Manning had something to prove. Russell Wilson was just happy to be there, okay? When I noticed, Russell Wilson and the Seahawks came out first. Russell Wilson came out ahead of the team, led them out onto the field, and then when he got about, well, maybe by the 10-yard line, to the 10-yard line out of the tunnel, he turned around and he went back and he just low-fived the rest of the team as they came out of the tunnel. He was passionate. Peyton Manning waited in the back of the tunnel, came out last. He didn't touch a single person on his way onto the field. 17 seconds into the game, what happened? There was just something disconnected there. And so I think that in that situation, passion proves a great leadership quality. So when we summarize, or we, we put this all together, and we begin to define what can we do with someone who particularly is in a place of having lost hope, just remember, life without purpose, passion, pride, is like an unsharpened pencil. Where's the point? Thank you.